Okay guys, well, that's about it, and I hope you've enjoyed the tour of uh, some basic over-unity uh, type systems and things you can further improve upon and explore. Um, I can't tell you too much more about some of the things Snow Labs is into, uh, but, you know, there's some surplus ideas there and things you can work with, and uh, everything else I'm going to probably have to keep kind of low-key in the future. Uh, we deal mostly in uh, highly condensed power systems, lightweight, high volume, high wattage, and uh, mostly for aerospace applications, which are typically confidential. So that's my interest, and uh, I'm not really a greenie, so uh, you know I'm not with you there. I'm not into all the greeny commie stuff, or the even the free energy uh, hippie type movement. You know, free energy, free love for all, that kind of thing. But uh, it's a good thing, and it actually makes the country more secure when you have backup power systems. Uh, if we have a nuclear war and the grid goes down, you know, with everybody having backup generator power, it's a good thing for the world and for the economy. Um, I don't think you're ever going to have much luck uh, anytime in the near future commercializing the free energy movement because uh, it's just that's against the racket and all that. And so a lot of my own commercial interests, we really don't even focus on talking about over unity or free energy. You know, it doesn't exist. It's impossible. It's, uh, it's just something, you know, you're all a bunch of hucksters and frauds, you know, we're, um, but we don't mention that here. We just, uh, we keep it secret. When you do with contracts and things like that, you don't talk about it. So that's what I work on, is that end, but I also have fun with the free energy movement and kind of uh, stirring the soup a little bit and trying to further your research, uh, because we learn from you too. And uh, usually things you find in the government world, they're pretty mediocre. You have a lot of really very smart people who are just sort of hacks, you know, they learn from you, just like I did. And um, they're very arrogant, though, a lot of them, and they think they know everything, when they don't really. Um, you know, remember the Wright brothers started out as two bicycle mechanics, E.V. Gray was an uh, automotive mechanic, uh, body mechanic. Uh, John Hutchison, uh, not really formally trained as a scientist, but he's pretty much given you the uh, Star Trek, uh, Starship Enterprise with warp engines there, the basics of it, which the military already had. And, um, but he's on to something there, definitely. And, uh, you know, as I was saying in some of our videos before, we do have a, a really much brighter future in aerospace. Things I never thought possible in rocketry uh, that we can actually do. You know, there's, we're aiming for Mars right now, and about, uh, you know, a couple decades ahead, the lifetime of your kids. You know, they're hoping that maybe we can go to Mars, and actually we can go much further. And these are some of the basic systems and uh, concepts and things like that that uh, can power deep space systems, you know, for colonies on Mars or anywhere else. And, um, you know, when you get there, you're going to be a little bit out of solar range, and you do need some form of power pack. Nuclear might not, might not be a good option because it's usually very heavy equipment. And, um, but we have other systems too, you know, the magnetic type systems. And you need, for any type of, you know, serious engine, you know, as you start approaching the speed of light, you do need gravity control, too. And the fun thing about these systems is they do start to shed mass and reduce their weight as you push them in over unity. So that's one fun part. Um, it's UFO technology, indeed, and man-made UFO technology. I don't know about the space alien stuff, and if I ever do, I ain't gonna tell you. Um, but uh, I don't know, really, right now kind of suspect a lot of it's BS and a lot of it uh, may be true, I don't know. But um, anyway, we can do the, the starships and we can do the UFOs, the Air Force UFOs and the man-made UFOs. Um, but control of gravity is something that uh, that's also relates to the control of time. And uh, that's not something that we really need floating around in the public. So, um, you know, you don't want every little kid with a cell phone stopping time, <laughs> shoplifting, things like that, getting past the Walmart security guards, so, um, that's about it, and, uh, you can make free energy in your backyard, and to run your house, and I think grid power is actually cheaper, so if you're looking for, you know, a, green, a true green movement, you know, there's still solar power, wind, and all the basics we have, um, natural gas, but these systems are, are much better, they're much more modern, they're actually decades old, and uh, they can do a lot more. And uh, you can actually save millions and billions and trillions of dollars 
producing that same grid power without any, uh, you know, pollution of the atmosphere and with uh, a much cleaner, greener type industry. So that's where these systems really have a lot of potential. Not so much in the home use because there's always going to be resistance to you using any type of systems at home. Most people aren't going to build them. You look at the solar power rackets we have right now and uh, you know they'll offer you loans and the politicians will go around speaking like they're doing the you know, solar industry a favor when actually it doesn't do much at all. You look at the loans, it makes no sense for me to convert my farm right here to solar power. There's really no interest in it that I have because it, it costs more. I'd be paying 200 a month to save 100 a month and on the existing loans that makes no sense. If it were a 40-year loan or tacked into a mortgage, then solar power does make more sense. Um, even wind power makes no sense. But building systems like this, these free energy units, uh, does. So it's something the hobbyists will continue to do over the next few years and decades ahead. Um, but you won't see much support of it commercially as usual. And you will probably find that, uh, hopefully, you know, as industry starts to adopt it, it'll be at least in secret for a while aerospace, uh, electrical, electric power generation type fields, computers. Um, and what happens is as it becomes more and more adopted then the industry will start to change I think. Um, you know you have uh, the ability of these technologies to actually make a very big difference but uh, usually it'll go along the path of solar power I think, I hope. Where you look at, you know, solar panels were a, a very threatening thing to the oil industry but they had a commercial need in aerospace and in consumer electronics. And so if you tap those markets, uh, we might be able to do some pretty good things with these type of systems. And they might become more commonplace. But there will always be sort of a sabotage of that, that business, as you see that's happened with solar. You know, solar's become very widespread, but there's still a, a sabotage of it. So. The powers that be make their billions off oil and the other rackets, and they also make many billions off solar. And it'll probably go the same way with this, too. So, that's okay. You know, we do something with it, and then as long as we keep stepping the technology forward, you have uh, improvements in aerospace technology overall. So that at least someday, as we start to aim for further distances and speeds in space, you have the ability to at least call upon other technologies that are more commonplace. And uh, that's how we get there. Bye-bye.